Hey, what's up? It's Donna St. Louis here, and I am in absolutely gorgeous Austin, Texas, here at the JW Marriott. It is gorgeous. You know, they have, they have this thing about Austin being a little weird, right? I haven't really run into any of the weirdness, but maybe that's just because I've been in the, com in the convention center. I'll have to figure out what that's all about. Um, just want to talk a little bit about today and, and everything that's going on in regards to buy, behind the scenes and working you know, as a speaker, as an expert, as a coach, as a consultant. One of the things that people always talk about is you know, they say that they felt like they crushed it. And you hear this quite a bit from people, oh my God, I know I crushed it, I know I did a great job. But here's the thing, you really want to be able to measure that. You want to be able to measure how good of a job you did because knowing how good of a job you did will actually help you determine um, what you need to improve upon and if you really need any improvements. And so there is a very specific way that I tell whether or not I've actually done a good job or not. And it's not because people say that I did a great job. So let me make sure that I can see everyone that everyone can see me. Hold on, get my lighting on. Okay, I can see you guys. All right, awesome. So let's, let's do this. So first of all, who am I? My name is Donna St. Louis. I am not only an international keynote speaker, I just crushed it today at the National Association of Broadcasters, and I'll tell you why I think I crushed it. And I'm also the CEO of High Profit Zone. At High Profit Zone, we take experts, we turn them into high profit entrepreneurs, which means we teach them everything from how to find their expertise, how to market that expertise, how to sell that expertise, and how to make money off that expertise in a consistent manner. All right, so if you've been paying attention, you know that for the past few days, I've been giving you behind the scenes look of everything that's going on at the National Association of Broadcasters Small Market Television Exchange. Now, how do you know that you crushed it? Because I've got a lot of people that hit me back and go, did you crush it? Was it good? Was it great? Whatever, whatever. I could just walk around and I could say, I know I crushed it because people walked up to me and they said, hey, you did a really good job. And to be honest, for a lot of people, that's exactly how they do that measurement. They just say that people say, you did a really great job. I'm gonna tell you, I have been in the audience where there have been speakers that are horrible. I mean, horrible. And there have been people that walk up to those speakers and say, they're really great then those same people, I will find them in the bathroom, I'll hear them in the bathroom, and they'll go, oh my God, that poor guy was so bad, I just had to say something nice, because <laughs> they didn't think anyone else would, right? And so you might have like a misunderstanding of what people really mean when they say you're great, so we want to be able to actually measure that. So how do I measure it? So I might get on stage and feel fantastic, because I'm holding the microphone, I felt like I delivered at the top of my game, and I really feel like I connected with the audience because there's this one person in the front that's going like this the whole time, right? And they're right there with me. And so I'm like, yeah, I crushed it. And I'm really focusing on the relationship between myself and that guy in the front, which means that I might think I crushed it because he was on point, but what about the other 2,000 people that was in, that was in the audience, right? Um, uh, Jeffrey said, I've seen those speakers too, and it drives me crazy to see a bad speaker on a big stage. I mean, like, yeah, and you see, and let's be clear, there have been really, really bad speakers on really, really big stages, and people do walk up to them and they say, oh my God, you did a great job. It happens a lot, like, it happens a lot. Okay, so how do you get yourself in check? How do you know, like, if you really crushed it? Well, let me tell you how I do it. There are very specific things that I look for, and it's not people who want to take selfies with me, or people who want to buy my book, or people who said I did a great job. Quite honestly, I mean, that's nice, I love it, I give those people hugs, it makes, it does make me feel like I did a great job, but that's not really, it's really not a part of my measurement, if I'm very honest. It's not a part of my measurement at all. I can't use it as a part of my measurement, because they just might be feeling because they had pancakes, like, you know what I mean? So how do I measure? The way I measure is two ways. Number one, does the event planner want to bring me back? Now, if they had you one year and they're like, girl, we need to have you back on the stage next year, that's kind of a big deal, all right? And I've heard that about three times already, like, okay, we're really trying to figure out how to get you back here. We know that we had somebody that you mentor, um, but we really think that we want to see you back here as well, so we're gonna figure out how to do that. So that's number one. Um, here's a big number two. So do they want you back, 
right? Now, don't get me wrong, that is not a great litmus because most of them really don't want you back the next year for whatever reason, right? They are like, they want something new every year. So that's fine as well. So don't use it as your only way to test because it's not a great way to test. Um, but here's the number two. Sometimes that same event planner will tell you that there are other events that they have that they want you at those events, right? The other thing is the people in the audience. I can tell you that I think I probably filled up about half of my calendar already because of people going, dates and rates, like when are you available and how much does it cost? Like if we want you just to do this, what if we want you to do a breakout session? What other things do you teach? So people are literally asking me for other information, other things that I teach. I'm sending them to my website. I'm going for event pros only to grab you know, the, my speaker book so they'll know. But quite honestly, and, and even when I say my rate, some people are like, well, can, is there any way that you can have something drawn up before you leave on Friday? Like, I'm leaving here on Friday. And that's another reason why I stay around, right? Um, because I want to make sure that if people do want to ask me those questions, I want to ensure that I can give them whatever it is that they're looking for. So I will likely sign a whole bunch of deals before I leave here, possibly even get deposits before I leave here on Friday, if I make sure that I do this right. So the thing that you have to be aware of is that it's not necessarily about people just telling you that you did a great job. Don't get me wrong, it feels great, of course. Someone walking up to you and giving you a compliment, especially after you just got off stage, feels fantastic. I love it, I love taking pictures of people, I love hugging them, I love asking what, the, what for them was impactful. Um, hearing them repeat the same thing that I said over and over and over again is very impactful as well. Um, I've heard things that I said at the beginning uh, during my speech, because I was the opener, I've heard those things repeated all day long, right? Um, and it was truly a motivational speech. That's the thing. It was truly a motivational speech. This was not one of my educational speeches. And so for people to be able to repeat that over and over again, so that's another way to know that you had an impact, right? So you're looking for these things. Are people repeating what you said? Is the event planner trying to find other ways to use you? In other words, they already paid you and they want to pay you again. Um, are people in the audience trying to figure out how to hire you, right? So when you start seeing those things, when you start seeing people go, I liked you so much, I want to do more business with you, that is when you know you've done a good job. Because I will tell you, I have seen people, I am not kidding you, that think they did a fantastic job. And then I go and talk to the event planner and they're like, I would never hire that person again. And even by the way, the event planner sometimes said that person did a great job to their face, but then they would hire them again. It's really hard for people to give you that honest feedback. So now is the time for you to be really honest with yourself. If you did a speech and you think you really did a great job on that speech, but you're not getting any repeat business, you may have missed a few things within that speech, as well as you may have not delivered at the top of your game like you thought you did. So it's really an opportunity for you to kind of get your ego in check. Now, I will tell you one of the things that I do is I use something that I teach within the High Profit Zone Mastery Program, which is craveable keynotes. How do I write the speech that lets people know, even during a motivational speech, that I am an expert in other areas and that they can leverage my expertise in order to hire me for other things? So I make sure that they're aware that even though I gave a motivational speech, I am an expert and I have other things to offer, right? And so I do a lot of work with sales teams. Like that is my, on the speaking side. How do I help you use the decision maker archetype to get people on board and to buy your product faster? It just works, right? And so, so making sure that I plant that seed in there so they know that, as well as making sure that I still stay on point and on task and deliver exactly what I promise to deliver is another way to ensure that you get those metrics that you're looking for at the end. Here's the thing, at the end of the day, if nobody is asking you, if you're there and you're hanging around and, and you're shaking hands and hugging and glad handing, and not one person says, I want you to come out and talk to my team, then either A, you're in front of the wrong target market, you're in front of the wrong audience, you're not in front of an audience of decision makers. And I will tell you, even when I haven't been in front of an audience of decision makers, those people have still said, I need your information so I can go back and talk to my boss. I was at Project Management Institute and I got the Starbucks deal, I got the Denver deal, I got like three other deals because the person, people were not decision makers but they went back and spoke to their boss and said, we need to have her here. Are you getting that type of response? If you're not getting that type of response, then you're probably not crushing it like you think you are. And here's the other thing, thanks Jeffrey. Here's the other thing. A lot of people ask me for my business card. It is. <laughs> 
people are not going to agree with me on this, on this. I'm going to tell you, they're not going to agree with me at all, and it's totally fine. You don't have to agree with me on it, but I'm going to tell you what I feel about business cards. I do not have a business card on purpose. And the reason is, is I want to be in control of the contact and the outreach. So when people ask me for my business card, I'm like, you know what, I'm all out, but if you give me one of yours, I'll reach back out to you. If you give them your business card, what's gonna happen with your business card is the same thing that I've seen happen with a lot of business cards. They end up wallpapering someone's desk, right? And so you wanna make sure that you use that, that you take control, that you take the business card, that you do the outreach. And make sure that you do the outreach by the end of the night when you get back to your room. That is a really big deal. So I know I kind of jumped over a little bit in regards to the two things, but the way that I measure whether or not I crushed it is really in regards to not just saying that I did a good job, but saying that you did such a great job, we want to work with you again. How can we make that happen? That's what we're talking about, and that's what you're really looking for. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. This has been a fantastic conference. I'm actually here, which is kind of funny. I'm actually here until Friday, and I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm so glad that you're here with us for a few days because I need to sit down and talk to you. I really want to talk to you about what you can come and do in my organization. So I'm not one of those people that go in and get out. I'm actually one of those people that I go in and I make sure that I'm around so people are going to ask me questions. I network. I shake hands. I, and I, by the way, and I don't do the whole sales thing while I'm here. I'm not sitting there going, and you need to buy my product. Um, more than, so than anything else, I'm probably using case studies and stories. I'm not really selling anything. So I don't, because I don't like that, I don't like the pushy sales thing. I'm here to have a good time with them, right? And I want to make sure that I'm giving them a full experience. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope that was helpful. I really want you to think about that. And if you're not getting those questions, by the way, if you're not getting people coming back and saying, hey, how can we ha hire you for a next thing? How you really go back and look at your speech. Um, if you don't, if you haven't done Craveable Keynote, you really probably need to talk to me about doing Craveable Keynote. But go back and look at your speech and then go, do you have the success takeaways and all the things that you need, hey John, and have all the things that you need in order to ensure that your keynote is so craveable that people are going, how can I get more of it? You definitely need that. So anyway, that's how I know I crushed it has less to do with people saying that I was great and has more to do with what happens after that. Mm, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a fantastic day. I actually have to go get ready for dinner. I'll talk to you later. Bye.